Good new time zone and reality everyone. My name is Zell here at Science Square and today is going to be a time lapse and review video. So today I've got a product from Christmas and it is the Curiosity Rover. Now this says it's by Roku and it was designed by Robotime. It has 209 pieces and it this is part I'm a little unsure if it says 14 and up on the box down here, but on the back it says recommended age 8 and up. So I'm not sure which one is the recommended age, but we're going to see it anyway. It is a level 3 puzzle. And I say puzzle because this is a kit you have to assemble from pre-cut wood pieces. But it's not just wood because on the back here, and as you can see on the front, it is a solar based wood. I think it's a toy. So we're going to call it a toy. So we have some sandpaper, we have wood glue, so that means it's not just a build and you're done, it's gonna be some building with some glue that it's set for a little bit. There's also some steel parts, there's some gears, there's some plastic, and a solar motor set. So I'm quite excited. I haven't built anything that's pre-cut wood or you have to assemble that's wood for a long time. So in a few years, the last thing I had built was the RoboTime Triceratops, the walking Triceratops, which I have a review video on it will be in the link in the description or in the card above and that was a couple years ago so I did the video but I built it way before I made the video on it so it's easy it's been about like six years seven maybe but it's been a long time so we're gonna see how this works the last one didn't need glue the robot the triceratops did not need glue this one looks like it's gonna be glue I mean why would they give you wood glue if it didn't need glue so we're gonna see how this goes, but let's see how long it takes us. And let's have fun with this. So the time lapse shall start now.
All right, it is done. It is finally done. The rover is built. Before I show it off, it took me nine hours and 25 minutes. This is the longest build I've done. Oh my goodness, the, the Hexbug Vex robotic arm only took me four hours and 35 minutes. This took me nine hours in a matter of two days because I had to wait for lighting to record it. Oh my goodness. But I tell you what, it was so worth it. Look at this thing. It is handheld. And by handheld, I mean two hands, but still is handheld. This was so fun to build. You don't even know. I haven't built anything like this in ages. I haven't played with wood and glue in like 17, not 17, <laughs> seven years or 10 years. It's been so long. It was so fun. But I do have a few tips because there are a few things I noticed when I was building it. One of the things is everything comes in a sheet. So you have to pop out all the parts and that's fine. And they're categorized by A, B, C, and D, and then their corresponding numbers. The thing is though, in the instructions, it doesn't tell you which way the designs should be facing. You know, all these things have, not every part, but a lot of parts have designs on them. And it won't tell you which way they should be facing. So you think ahead, which way is this gonna end up looking? These right here, for example, I was thinking, okay, I think the whole thing's gonna be facing this way. So when you're looking at it, the design should be here. And it is, I was correct. But it would've been nice if they said the design should be facing this way. And these were the parts that had designs. Sometimes it's very obvious, other times it's not. For example, there's the mini head here. If you can't see it, there are two circles. There should only be one. That's because when I was looking at the directions, I had picked up a circle and I said, oh, okay, this is the correct size. If I couldn't tell what part it was, I would go back to the sheet and place it back through its hole and be like, okay, it fits, this is the correct piece, this is the number, this is A35. If it didn't fit, this is not a piece, go to the other one. So I picked it up, measured it, and it was fine. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, and it, even, it even matched the hole. It had an outline, the little head, and it, it matched. So I put it there, not thinking anything of it. And when I saw at the end, I had these two circles left. I was thinking, something's not right because for the propeller, it wanted a circle underneath. Well, you shouldn't have a design underneath something else. Then what's the point? I looked at the box I had and I placed the wrong circle in the wrong spot, but they were roughly the same size. So I ended up having to glue the correct circle on top. I couldn't remove the previous one. I glued it on there. I glued it on there good. It wasn't coming off. I tried. So I took up some, some spare pieces I had and glued them together and that's the base for the propeller. But it's a few things like that where I couldn't tell which way it was supposed to face. And then what else was there? Well, it was more so when you took things out, they're not labeled. That was the other thing. These parts, most of them, because they're too small, are not labeled. Some parts, if they're big enough, they'll be labeled, you know, D3 and C5. But because there are a lot of small pieces, they're not labeled. So the minute you take them out, you have no idea what group they belong to. So what I did, and I highly recommend doing, is when you take them out, put them in categories. Put all the A pieces together, put all the B pieces together, C, D, just put them all in their own separate groups. So you know when you're building in the instructions, okay, I need a piece from group A. Well, that's over here. Now you need to figure out which one it is because there's more than one, one piece. So, and they're not always labeled, like I said. So that was one thing, but there were extra pieces. So I took the extra pieces and I put uh, the yellow pieces. I'm not sure what they're called, I'm just gonna call them pieces. The yellow pieces here and here. I did have them on the ends of the wheels here because it adds color, that was nice, but it stopped them from spinning really well. So I took them off and then I had an extra, I had two extra small rods that I placed on the arms here. I glued them on. There were some wooden rods that were there, but it didn't really hold well. So I just glued them on there. There was an extra of one of the hexagon pieces. So I just cut it off and stuck it on the back. I had a long rod. I glued that on there too. 
there is this handle, which I'm not really sure what it's for. I guess if you want to just hold it or, you know, pick it up, it works like that. I had an extra, so I put it on the solar panel flat piece. Instead of, you know, having to grab it like this to angle it or putting your fingerprints all over the panel, I thought having this little handle would be nice to grab it. And it works really well. And let's see, what else was there? Another thing I noticed was it's sometimes hard to put the wooden rods and the metal rods through some of the holes. So just be careful with that. Sometimes I split a piece trying to get the wooden rod through. It would turn and just kind of angle and force that momentum. And I split a piece. I also split this piece trying to push it down. So I had to glue it, but depending on how you break it, you can just glue it back together or just glue it on there. No shame in that because let's be honest, you're not taking this apart. You're not. I mean, maybe someone, some of you will, but you're really not going to take it apart. So just glue it on there. If you break something, it's okay. That's also why they had spares. I forgot there's a spare because I wasn't sure if I would use it later. So I had a lot of spares left over. I tried to find places to put stuff and just glue it on for design wise, but there were some parts that were just way too big. There was no way I could glue it somewhere. But it's nice they give you spares. They give you spare the little bits. They give you spares of the clear white squares. So that was really good. Overall, I had a lot of fun building this. Now, on the box in the beginning, I said it had two ages. On the front, it said 14 and up. On the back, it said 8 and up. I personally recommend 14 and up because the wooden rods don't come pre-cut. They there's You get two of them. They're long. You have to cut them yourself. I used an X-Acto knife, and that was really handy. But because I had to use something sharp, I recommend 14 and up. If you're not comfortable with your 14-year-old cutting something or using something sharp, and you can't really use scissors, I don't think. Or if you yourself are just not comfortable using it, then have a parent or a grandparent, the guardian, an older sibling, as long as they're over 14 or if they're allowed, then let them do it. If you do give this kit to your child and they are younger than 14, then I recommend once they get all the parts out of the box and set everything up, then go ahead and just pre-cut everything for them. If you don't want to sit there and watch them, then skip ahead in the instructions, because in, in the instructions, they have pictures of how long everything's supposed to be. You don't have to measure a single thing. Even though there's a tool that has measurements on it, like a ruler, you don't need it whatsoever. So just go ahead, hold up to the picture, make a mark with like a marker, or I just put like a little divot. I put some pressure on the rod and made a little divot with it, and then just cut it later. Then go ahead and do that, measure every single thing out, and everything's pre-cut, and your child is good to go. They may want some help though because sometimes the rods were really hard to put through the holes. The metal ones and the wooden ones. Sometimes I think the wooden one was harder. So sometimes you may have to help them with that. It was a little hard. You can't always glue everything together. So don't think, oh, just skip the rods, glue everything. No, the rods help line things up perfectly a certain way. So you will have to use the rods. Don't think you can just escape from that. But other than that, this was very much worth it. Despite some of the troubles, it, I had a lot of fun with it. Parts move as well, like the head right here moves. It does come off if you're not careful. I didn't want to glue it, but you could glue it if you want. Comes right off. <laughs> so maybe glue that part. It doesn't snap. I mean, it does kind of snap, but it's not strong enough. It's very loose. But you know, that part moves. I think I can move it up and down. I won't because I don't want to break anything. It shouldn't, but there are some things I just won't move. So I personally will not move. But you know, this part moves, the wheels in the front move. And I just want to say that the solar parts right here, I did make a note of this earlier, but it does not charge. It's not battery based. So it's more of an on and off thing. So if there's sun, it'll be on. If there's no sun, it won't work. So don't think you have to charge it. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to charge anything. But you do need any you you do need sunlight in order for it to work. Now, when I said it was a toy, I think the more proper words for it is decorative toy. It's not a full decoration, but it's not a full toy either. Because well, one, it's just wood. It's not really meant to be like rubbed house with or anything like that. I don't think you'd really damage the motor too much, but you know, if you were just like, you know, roll it across the floor, 
I don't think you damage it too much, but I don't recommend it either because if you break it, well, that's that. It would be a pain to try to take all of this apart to just go replace the motor. So it's not really for that. And it, plus it's one direction. Whatever direction you place it down, it's going that direction. You can't turn it, it's not remote controlled. So that's why I say it's more of like a decorative toy. It looks cool, plus this is the fruit of your labor of however long it took you. This is it. So it's always that, but then also it's just cool to see it go on the floor and watch it go forward and off to its destination. I can see making some short little movies with it or stop motion, because you can move, like I said, you can move a few parts or even just race with it. it you know, it's those kind of things. So I can see in that sense maybe why it was marked eight and up, but I really do think it's 14 and up. But either way, this was very fun to build. If you have any other but either way, this was very fun to build. Before we end off the video, let's go ahead and roll the clip of it working. I have a couple shots of it running across the pavement outside. And because the motor is covered, you could potentially use it on carpet. I don't recommend it too much because we all know with RCs and anything with a motor or pullback toys, it's going to get jammed. After a while, the motor just won't run anymore. <laughs> Because it's clogged all the hairs and fuzz and stuff from the carpet. So wood floors or concrete is preferable. I wouldn't, wouldn't really do this outside too much because it's really not an outside toy. If it's really nice out, you know, there's no fuzz outside, there's no rain, it's not windy, it's, it's, not, it's a really nice day out, then yeah, you could do this outside for a little bit. But like I said, it's a decorative toy, not full decoration, not toy. So keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and roll the clip of it actually working. Thank <laughs> you.